past it and now in your later years reflecting on all of that? <laughs> what you say? <laughs> specific things to say about auditioning. And it's something that happened to me about 25 years ago, almost 30 years ago now. I used to think, and I put it in the book because it's really important, it changed my professional life. If, if any of you can adapt this philosophy, and I, I think, uh, honestly, it could, it could change your professional life or the way you see things. The, what I perceived to be a job interview was an audition. Right? It was, it was, it makes sense. They're auditioning, they're, they're going to produce a television show or a commercial or a movie or a play or whatever it is, and they need to hire actors to do so, right? So I used to think that, well, I'm tr going in there to try to get a job. But when you are, put yourself in a position of need or want, what happens is that you relinquish power and control over to some unknown entity. It just evaporates out of you if you need and want something. You are not in a position of control and in an audition. And I and this is the same thing when you're going in, if you're a writer or a dancer, if you're going in to pitch a story, to tell a story, as, as a director, I read this story, this is what I see. If you need and want that job, it'll show. It'll seep out, and people will be able to tell that there's a need or want there. Nobody wants to hire someone who actually needs a job. We want to hire people who are confident in what they're doing and saying and selling of themselves. So, do you know the feeling when you give something to a, another person, let's say it's a present, and you're really excited because your friend is going to really love this present. They needed a scarf, and they're complaining about how cold it is. And here it is. And they open it up, and they, oh my god, this is what I need. It makes us feel great. Whether you're donating to a charity, or actually on a soup line, or helping, helping someone, it, it makes us feel empowered to give, right? That's the same point of view you need to take into that room. I'm here to give you something, something of value. Now this is where it gets a little tricky because you can't look at it in a conceited sort of self-centered way. My gift is so valuable to you, man. You are so lucky. I'm giving you a gift. Yes. You're welcome. It's not at all that. It, it is a quiet confidence. But you, if I ask every one of you if you were talented, you better say yes. And it's, and I don't want to hear the false modesty. Well, I, you know, I, I, if you're doing that, if you're doing the dance of no, well, I can't release it, then you don't belong in this profession. Sorry, but you you have to develop a. And it's again, it's not being boastful. It's just saying yes, I'm talented. And, and I own that, and I, and I value my talent. So when I go into a room to pitch a story as a director or a writer or an actor to an audition, I am here to give you something. It may be the solution to your problem, but that's up to you. All I'm doing is giving you an option. I'm giving you an option. So when you come into a room and you have confidence, I'm on the other side now, I direct it and produce, and I'm seeing people come in all the time pitching themselves. And I can tell immediately who has a sense of confidence and who is flop sweating with you can, you can smell it. You can smell it, and it's, it doesn't smell pretty. It's, it's true. And what happens is that confidence is, is you know, it, it's addictive. You know, you, you, you enjoy the feeling of that. It's also, you get to catch it. You know, if someone comes into the room and I, and I sense confidence, uh, you're giving me more confidence in, uh, in evaluating what you're saying. Do you, do you know the moment when you really felt that for the first time and you knew you had it? 
Yeah, uh, there was a, a you know back in the in the uh, my seminal moments are in the in the late '60s, '70s, and through the early '80s. It was a very me generation. It was a very very hedonistic time, and in the late '80s, things started to change. Uh, there were a lot of self help things going on. If you remember Martha. Marianne Williamson, Warner Earhart, uh, Warner Earhart um, uh, Leo Buscalia, there were, I mean, uh, Dwayne, uh, Wayne Dyer, and I mean, there was it's like how to be the better you, and men are from Mars, women are from Venus, now, all these things to try to understand ourselves better. And there was one guy, I, you know, we were taking seminars with my then girlfriend, who's now my wife, and um, one guy said, you know, success is, is just, Focusing all your attention on the thing that you do and love without having a claim on an outcome. So, think about that. That's pretty cool. You are putting all your focus and attention on what you do. So, as an actor, that it changed everything for me. I went, oh, I'm not here to get a job. I'm here to do a job. Subtle difference, enormous effect. Just think about the difference. If you only went in that room to focus on what you do, create a compelling character and present it, and that's it, and you walk away, you've done your job. Everything else is outside of your purview. It's, it's not your decision to call you back or whatever. I used to do that, once that happened, it was free, a weight lifted off my shoulders. It doesn't mean you don't do the work. There's no shortcut for the work. I've been doing this for 37 years. That I can tell you, there is no shortcut. You have to do work. It's hard work, there's a lot of work. So you better love it. And it, gets, and it gets harder the higher you get up in the businesses. It gets even harder. Or not. No. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, the fact that I don't have to audition anymore, uh, just improves my numbers. You know, it's, 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 it's just that. But, but the work of, of preparing and so on, that doesn't change. Doesn't, it never changes. Right, that's what I mean. Yeah, that never changes. <laughs> it's, it's just you, you either put in the time or you don't. And if you don't, it'll show. And if you develop a reputation um, and you're proud of your work, oh, well, you, you better not slack off. I mean, because then, then all of a sudden it's like, what happened to him? Wow, that was awful. So um, that's that's the big note is that you you have to feel like you're going in and and giving them something of value. This is an actor's arrogance. When Shirley Knight, a beautiful actor, Oscar-nominated actor, told me in, in, a, in a class that I went to hers for a while, and it's like you have to have an actor's arrogance, a sense of ownership and I can do this, and I'm going to present this to you. Now, that's why there's the qualifier, actor's arrogance. You don't want to take that out into the real world because it's smug and, and ugly. Uh, so it only belongs in inside. You don't want to tell your parents, you know, I have an actor's arrogance, mom. <laughs> you know, and they're not going to get it. The civilian population doesn't really understand us at all, uh, and they worry. <laughs> but that's for them to worry, you know. So that that's all right. Um, but that's a big. The second thing that happened as as a as a rich residual effect of this was enormous too. I used to be very competitive. I used to look at someone in my age group and go, "That fucker is really good." <laughs> <laughs> Why is he here? Oh man. Okay. Oh, oh he's good too. I'm seeing his work. And you could you could make yourself crazy with all that, because because I'm here to get a job and they're trying to get my job, so it's like it's positioning and the testosterone comes out or whatever the sense of competition. When I adapted this new philosophy, that all went, it all disappeared. So remember, I'm doing all my work without an attachment to an outcome. So I didn't claim ownership on that role. It wasn't mine. I'm, I'm doing this for part, and I'm presenting it. I'm done. So if I heard a friend got a job, that I also, it, it wasn't mine. So I could honestly 
celebrate my friend's job. That's what you want. This is what's going to sustain you through the year, through 37 years. If you don't make this change, a little seed of resentment will start to turn and it becomes, it starts to plant itself and we, pretty soon it's a plant and a tree and a forest of resentment and anger. And you will be, you will self implode because you have not given over. The idea that if someone else gets a job that you auditioned for or you pitched and it's, it's caving you in as a person, you need help. Start now, adapt this philosophy. It cleanses your spirit, man. It's so cool when you can earnestly tell someone who got the job that is in, you're like me. You, oh, God, God, good, you got it. That's great, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you. It was never mine. It's like me finding a wallet here, and I look at it, and oh, it's yours? I'm not angry, it's not mine. <laughs> it's not mine, it's his wallet. So give it to him. Hey, I'm happy you found your wallet. Because what would, it, God, if I lost my wallet, I, that'd be nice if someone found it, right? It, it is amazing what you can do if you just let that all go. You're here to do a job, not to get a job. Both. Cool.